so peaceful, isn't it peaceful? It's beautiful. How I you, took the long way to go get my mail. How you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, oh, yeah, just peaceful. Isn't it peaceful? Sometimes That's, I come out here in the morning and drink my coffee. Yeah, it's a perfect it's, spot. I kinda, I'm kind of in the mindfulness meditation. Have you ever heard of Calm? Yes. I do that every morning. Isn't that cool? I love it. This uh, is the perfect place for it. I kind of produce all that kind of stuff. Are you serious? Yeah, I do. Right here, in, everything I do is right here in Little Whale Cove. I'll, I'll send you my YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, I would love that. Uh, do, do you know how I can... You're Steve, right? Steve Sparks. Um, Michelle just told me. <laughs> um, I'm Lorinda. I live right here on 465 at the Edgewater. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the book. Uh, or do you want me to send you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I would really like that. What's your phone number? Uh, oh, okay. Five, Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Five zero nine six seven zero seven seven six six. I can be technically challenged sometimes, so it's easier for me just to call you than you have my number. You can. T uh, if you. If you call me a little bit later, uh -huh. or you can call me right now, that's cool, and text me. Okay, good. Yeah, it's calling me right now, so when I get home, I'll actually text you and give you my name okay. and email. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd love that. I really yeah, would. Yeah, well, I do, uh, this is my life, doing this kind of work, and I do a lot of writing, but it's all about love and kindness and mindfulness meditation. How I'm, could you not do it any better? I, you know, you couldn't be in a better mm -hmm. spot. So I'm so anxious to hear from you. That'll well, you awesome. will. I have a quite a platform for this. Awesome. Healing. Okay. A lot about behavioral health and. Um, I'm a, a pharmacist. So well, I, you'll. Uh, I try to tell my patients that all the time. You will really love uh, my website. I'm and really what, excited. And uh, we just published a new book too. Oh, what's it called? Uh, the furry loved ones and wildlife friends who touch our hearts. That sounds beautiful. Sounds really nice. It's a fun book. Very cool. Well, I'm going to text you as soon as I get home, and then you'll have my information. Well, thank you. And I'll just, I'm doing one of my uh, uh, films right now, and it's all about doing it naturally, not uh, in a way that's scripted. Right. So I love having friends and neighbors stop by because that's all part of the experience. I and volunteer. All the wildlife, I write about the wildlife here. Uh, I have names for the, I have one seagull friend named Old George. It sounds, have a seat. It sounds familiar. We, um, we moved from um, Portland originally, but we lived in mm -hmm. Lincoln City. And I had a seagull that I called big, my husband called him Big Dog, because we could feed, I could just feed him out of my hand. He would take stuff out of my hand. But we name all our, we have a couple bunnies, and we feed all the birds the corn cob and stuff. Of and, course. Yeah. And uh, the, our book, by the way, is all about connecting with uh, furry loved ones and uh, wildlife friends right here in the cove. and. I've written about uh, some many of our own furry loved ones here in the neighborhood. Some have passed on, so I have some rainbow bridge stories in there. And I named the uh, uh, Canadian hawkers down there in the cold, Matt <laughs> and Maddie. There are. There's always two there. Matt, there's always two, and they come back every year. There are generations of them, and they uh, fly down here uh, for a while and nest and get those little goslings out and we like to watch them uh -huh. and we hope that all seven of them will you know, will uh, uh, survive because sometimes Grits, the intrepid eagle. Is that what you named him? Yeah. Grits. Grits, the intrepid <laughs> eagle. So uh, Grits is up there watching over and sometimes Matt who watches over everything, they're really good at watching for stuff. And sometimes he can save his babies. Yeah, and Matt. Matt's pretty tough. You I know, it. Matt keeps all the 
the uh, other Canadian hawkers from Big Whale Cove away. Sometimes I was down there and there was a couple of them. Yeah, they came in and Matt, boy, before the babies were born, he was out there and boy, he kept, because they have their eggs over there in the bushes going up to Big Whale Cove. Right. So he's out there. Ready and to he attack. He keeps those so dudes from Big so Whale. Cool. These are the bad boys. That is very from, cool. And they come in and they're jealous <laughs> of them because they have this whole thing in Little Whale Cove. All to it's themselves. Like, Nobody else. They, but the seagulls are there, and they all get along because sometimes uh, the Canadian hawkers, if they can't keep uh, the egg for some reason, they'll drop it in a. Uh, uh, so the seagulls kind of help out. So, like, they'll drop it specifically for the seagulls. No, they'll drop it in the nest oh. or the. Uh, uh, oyster catchers especially uh -huh. are known if they're unable to handle an egg or something happens they'll drop it in the seagull nest. You're kidding. And do they nest and they'll, on it? They'll, they'll bring it out. The oyster, are those the ones with the orange beak? Yeah, okay. they're my favorite. I know, they're beautiful. Uh, that, uh, so we've got uh, some, we've named uh, uh, Olive and Olivia. Very cool. And we've got uh, so that I've written about them, and then uh, you I know. have to share a story. Yesterday, when I was walking, I've never seen this before. The seagull was sitting on the the rock, and there's you know there's tons of room, tons of space. But another seagull flew up to him, and the the seagull that was there originally grabbed a hold of his wing and held it in his beak. And the other seagull couldn't get away until he finally pulled away. Mm -hmm. But it made me think, why can't we all get along? Like, well, they, <laughs> there's so uh, much we, rock we're, here. Well, uh, we're predisposition to things, and they're not. They're on, they only know love and kindness, and then they protect each other, and they protect their clans, and they all have it set it up as communities, and then they help one another when they all need help. Uh, but uh, so someone from another community comes oh, in. Oh yeah, they're, you know, they're all that's going on around here, and the seals and the gray whales and everything here get they all get along. That's they don't so cool. they don't do the stuff we do. Yeah. Uh, so I've noticed that, and that's why I write about it. Oh, because I want to show people how be reminded of what love and kindness is all about. How about that? That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's pretty important. So, so it was really, really nice meeting you. What was your first name? Lorinda. Lorinda. It was yep. so wonderful to meet you and it, have this conversation. It was. It was really nice meeting you, Mr. Sparks. I you will call me Steve. Steve. Some Most people call me Sparky. Okay. And then my daughter calls me Pops. And then my <laughs> new grandson's going to call me Pops. Awesome. And then my wife's name is Judy, and she's Grammy. Okay. Well, I'll remember Sparky. All right. I look forward to talking to you. See you later. All right.